Hello Wildcats, I'm Ashley Freedy. Today is Monday, March 27, 2017, and you're watching Wildcast. And I'm Megan Gibbs. Tonight we have a great show for you, so stick around. SWAT police conducted a survey for both men and women to participate in relating to March Madness. At the start of the tournament, Duke was the favorite among surveyors. However, with the big upset of Arizona losing as well as Duke, it'll be interesting to see how students' brackets play out. People all over the world spend tons of money on their March Madness. Madness bracket each year. According to Swaplease.com, 13% of women polled said that they would spend between $20 and $25 on their bracket compared with 18% of men who said similar. The launch of Arizona Patent Program took place on campus. This program is designed to help undersourced inventors um, in small companies. Wildcast reporter Allison Callen has the details. The University of Arizona launched its public patent program offered by the James E. Rogers College of Law, IP, and Entrepreneurship Clinic, along with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, to help Arizona's inventors. We were excited when Arizona came to us and said, hey, we're interested in starting a program because we know that it's going to be, the residents are going to be better served by having the University of Arizona act as a hub to provide these services to your residents. And so now students get the opportunity to get practical experience helping people, which is great because these people need help, and they get great experience in learning about patents and prosecuting before the office. This statewide program not only helps small inventors, but also small companies and startup businesses. You know, when someone has an invention and they come up with it, that very well can be the start of something very, very big. It can be still very rewarding for inventors to see the fruits of their invention by trying to sell their product and trying to make something. Our program will help them do that because it affords them the ability to get protection for their inventions. The launch was also geared towards students of IP law to educate and open up networking opportunities. So things like this event tonight are great opportunities to not only meet potential investors, but also attorneys and people that can give you advice on how to be successful. As well as the chance to get to meet with people um, in the business community and just in the Tucson community as well. Reporting for UATV, I'm Allison Callen. Earth Week 2017 begins today and students have the opportunity to attend various events on campus throughout the week. The School of Earth and Environmental Sciences at the U of A showcases that research that undergraduate and graduate students have conducted. Sessions will include posters and talks with the students. For more information regarding the events, contact Carla Vargas at email.arizona.edu. The second annual Fiesta for Resplendor International has a short program that consisted of entertainment and appetizers. Our very own reporter Ashley Freedy attended the event. Resplendor International and World of Words, in collaboration with Learning A to Z, joined together to support the Resident Summer Program in Mexico designed to promote literacy and a love of reading. The event included a raffle, silent auction, and native food and music. Literacy is an international problem, which is why the College of Education put on the second annual fiesta to support and to cultivate a love of reading and literacy. We continue to work together to provide students with opportunities to learn more about themselves, learn more about other cultures, and really become active and involved citizens in the local community as well as the global. The College of Education is passionate about the way literature is used to build intercultural relationships, which plays a role in why they hosted this event. We also really stand for the ways in which we can use story as a way to understand each other, that, that through story we're able to make connections with the people um, who may seem on the outside as if they're different from us, but through story we begin to find our common humanity as well as what makes each person unique. The event goes to show that though our languages are different, we can still find commonality. Reporting from the College of Education for UATV, I'm Ashley Freedy. It's time to hear from our Chief Meteorologist, Taylor Dayton. Taylor, what do you have for us? 
But we had a, a breezy day out there today. Overall, though, not a bad day as we take a look at your almanac here. You can see our afternoon high today was 81 degrees, uh, which is about 4 degrees above our average of 77 degrees there today. So really wasn't too bad temperature-wise, but we did see some windy conditions around 20 to 30 miles per hour. Uh, so it was breezy out there. We'll take a look, though, heading into your 7-day forecast in a little bit at uh, if those winds stick around and uh, what your weekend's going to look like coming up in just a little bit. Back to you guys. Also coming up next, you will hear all about a day full of lasers. Plus, you'll hear about the 4th Avenue Street Fair that had local art, craft, food, and live music for students and people in our community to enjoy. UATV3, now on Facebook. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Toby Schmidt. And I'm Michael Hernandez. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Sarina Nafarrate. And I'm Danielle Karp. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Max Allen. And I'm Jackie Kent. Welcome to Wildcast. Welcome. Welcome. And welcome. Welcome. And welcome to another edition of Wildcast. Reporting. 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 The project. Aside from a sport that made the women's team. Before the 9-11. Students. I caught up with what goes on. Experts are more. Yeah. Students came. Online catfish. The project will be. Yeah. The College of Optical Science held a laser fun day event. This event incorporated optic related activities for elementary and middle school children as well as their families. Stick around because Wildcat Caitlin Berto attended the event and has all the details. The University of Arizona's College of Optical Sciences held their annual event, Laser Fun Day, last Saturday. This free event was open to the Tucson public and targeted towards the parents and children in elementary and middle school. Activities included a laser maze, solar radiation, kaleidoscopes, a cow eye dissection, and an infrared camera. Volunteers at this event include graduate and undergrad students within the optical science major. They got a chance to demonstrate their studies to the community. Getting to walk around and see the faces of kids whose minds have been blown. Because sometimes you can walk away from a really interesting demonstration and you've, you've got a child just with this huge grin on their face. And you know, maybe we had the chance to inspire that kid to become the next generation of scientists. The lollipop station when I got to see the reflection. Because it looked cool and the, there were dots on mine. Laser Fun Day has been going on for seven years and hope inspiring young children into the world of optical sciences. Um, seeing my oldest son asking questions and starting to think of like what's going on with the polarized light and like thinking of it science fair experience for him for the future. I think he's actually learning so that's my favorite part of the night. Grants from the International Society for Optics and Phototonics and the Optical Society helped put on this event. Reporting from the College of Optical Sciences for UATV, I'm Caitlin Berto. The Student Health Advocacy Committee hosts their 11th annual 5K Run Like a Fool. 
HopeFest provides underprivileged community members and families with free medical, dental care, vaccines, food, and household items. All proceeds from the event will benefit Tucson HopeFest. The event will take place on the UA Mall this Saturday, April 1st at 9 a.m. It is $10 per runner for groups of five or more, but for an individual runner, it is $15. To register, go to rfyl.arizona.edu. Students in the local community came out to enjoy the weather and participate in activities while enjoying the good food at the 4th Avenue Street Fair. Wildcast reporter Massey McKenzie gives us an inside look. <laughs> The biannual Tucson Street Fair has been going strong for 47 years, attracting massive crowds and tourism. I just wanted to check it out. I live nearby. Uh, Kira's never been to one before, and so uh, basically checking out the jewelry in particular. <laughs> um, we come every year, anytime it's out here. It's just an awesome time to walk them down forth, drink a beer, see all the vendors. I'm here today at the 4th Avenue Tucson Street Fair. As you can see behind me, everything's in full swing with one of their biggest turnouts they've ever had. Over 400 vendors from Tucson locally and all over the country have come to showcase their goods. Well, we are here to sell our delicious popcorn, and I think the street fair really helps the Tucson community by bringing in art artists from all over the region, whether it be, you know, the southern, southwestern part of the United States or we're from Portland, and so brings people in from all over to allow people to see art and craft and craft food that they wouldn't normally see. And we're a food vendor at the 4th Avenue Street Fair. We've been here 34 years, and we sell sausages and bratwurst and Polish and burgers and chili cheese fries, and we have a, we're one of the two exclusive lemonade booths here. The fair promotes small Tucson businesses and brings the community together for drinks, food, and fresh air. Reporting from 4th Ave Street Fair for UATV, I'm Madison McKenzie. Gen Cyber Day is designed to introduce students to the academic and professional world of cybersecurity. Students have the chance to learn from experts the strategies, concepts, and tools needed to defend against cyber attacks. The event will take place this Thursday, March 30th from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the JW Marriott Star Pass. No, re no reservation is required, however, visit the website for a list of details. Hey guys, uh, take a look at your forecast here for tonight. Uh, it was, as I mentioned earlier, a bit breezy earlier this afternoon, but this evening those winds should calm down. We're going to stay pretty mild overnight, though temperatures dropping down for an overnight low, about 51 degrees uh, overnight tonight, but uh, staying pretty mild throughout the evening by about 10 o'clock tonight, 66 degrees still, and by the midnight hour, if you're still out and about, about 62 degrees there. As we head into tomorrow morning, though, and we take a look at your forecast for tomorrow, you're going to see uh, those temperatures Temperatures warm up pretty nicely throughout the day. Uh, temperatures about 57 degrees to start your morning, about 8 o'clock if you do happen to have those early morning classes. And uh, by the lunch hour, 71 degrees. And uh, to wrap up your afternoon, 73 degrees. So all in all, not a bad day temperature-wise. It's going to be breezy, though, and it is going to be about 10 degrees cooler than what we saw today. Now, as we take a look at your weather map here, we're going to show you why we've been seeing those breezy conditions around the Tucson area. And we have a cold front that is uh, over here to off the west, just moving in to Arizona uh, overnight tonight and into tomorrow, and that cold front's gonna make its way towards us, bringing in a lot of cool air in behind that system. And that's what's bringing in those winds as well. Now we'll take a look at your seven day forecast and we'll show you what we're talking about there. Um, should have sunny skies for the most part throughout your week, 73 degrees, uh, as I mentioned, for tomorrow. Wednesday, we warm back up to 79 degrees, and then uh, 85 by Thursday, so poolside weather for sure by Thursday. And just in time for your weekend, another storm system comes in Friday and Saturday. Not a whole lot of rain with that system either. Uh, mostly windy, though, Friday and Saturday, and we cool back down into those low 70s. And uh, keep in mind, the final four is this weekend uh, up in Phoenix for Saturday uh, and into your weekend into Sunday and Monday as well and our sports director uh, Daniel Fork has an update on our March Madness and sports for us coming up. 
Hey Wildcats, I'm Danielle, the UATV sports anchor, and March Madness has come and almost gone. Like Taylor said, the tournament wraps up this weekend in Phoenix with the Final Four. Although Arizona didn't make it that far, we have some interviews from their loss at the Sweet 16 after the break. Plus, Arizona softball and head coach Mike Candrea had a huge weekend here in Tucson, and our reporters caught the action. Don't go away, Wildcats Sports is next. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Toby Schmidt. And I'm Michael Hernandez. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Sarina Nafarrate. And I'm Danielle Karp. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Max Allen. And I'm Jackie Kent. Welcome to Wildcast. Welcome. Welcome. And welcome. Welcome. And welcome to another edition of Wildcast. Reporting. 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 The project. Aside from a sport that made the women's team before the 9-11. Students. I caught up with what goes on. Experts are more. Students came. Online catfish. The project will be. Life wasn't so sweet for Wildcat fans at the Sweet 16 in San Jose over the weekend. Number two seeded Arizona basketball was upset by number 11 seeded Xavier. Not many fans were expecting the loss and I don't think players were either. I went into the loss in person out in San Jose and man, it was hard to watch and it was even harder to see the players struggle through interviews after the game. Check it out. The number two Arizona Wildcats fell to number 11 Xavier, 73 to 71, in the Sweet 16 tonight out here in San Jose, California. Alonzo Trier put up a three pointer with seconds left in the game, but it went in and out as Xavier grabbed the rebound and the clock ran out. Trayvon Blewett led the way for Xavier with 25 points, and Arizona was scoreless in the last two minutes and 52 seconds of the game. I had a chance to go into the locker room after the game, which was very quiet, very shaken up, and talk to the players about this devastating loss. Everyone's eyes that was a part of this whole process was set on a Final Four, and, you know, we weren't able to reach that, and our journey ends today in and, and the Sweet 16 game, and... Um, it's really tough to go out like that, you know, especially when um, you know what you're capable of. And, you know, but that's how college basketball is at any day, any time anybody can be beat. And, you know, today was our day. We, we didn't expect that we were going to lose in state 16. We had, you know, we had a high, high goals. Um, and obviously playing Final Four in Phoenix, we, we just didn't expect it. Uh, like I said, those three, last three minutes of the game, they just, they play better. I don't know what happened. And it hurts a lot right now. It's sad that this ended right now. I think we had the chance to go a lot further, but we're proud of these guys. Played their hearts out. Sports. Um, I enjoy my time at Arizona. Um, I enjoy my teammates, enjoy my coaches. Uh, I love these guys. and. You know, they wish the best of luck to me, and I wish the best of luck to all of them. Arizona baseball did not have a successful weekend either as they were swept by Oregon State Beavers up in Corvallis. They are now 16-7 and on the season and 2-4 and in the Pac-12. All six of their conference games have been played on the road. Arizona men's swimming came home from the 2017 NCAA championships out in Indianapolis with two school records. Junior Justin Wright broke his own school record in prelims before breaking the school record in the 200 fly with a time of 1 minute and 40.94 seconds, earning him 7th place and All-American honors. Five other Wildcats also earned honorable mention honors. Exciting news for softball, head coach Mike Candrea earned his 1,500th win this weekend as they swept the Washington Huskies here in Tucson. Sports reporter Stevie Katz has the weekend recap. 
The number five ranked Arizona Wildcats gave head coach Mike Candrea his 1,500th career win on Sunday, beating the number six ranked Huskies 5 to 2. Speedy runner Ava Watson stole to second base, being safe as senior shortstop Mo Mercado was up at bat. The game was unscoring until Mercado hit her fourth home run of the season in the bottom of the fourth inning, putting the Wildcats on top 2 to 0. The UA fans excited and cheering their team on. Senior Katiana Malga smacked the ball between second and third base. Mercado was then walked, advancing Malga to second. The Wildcats next take on Grand Canyon State as a doubleheader Wednesday at 3 and 5 p.m. Reporting to you from Hillenbrand Stadium for UA TV Sports, I'm Stevie Katz. As Taylor said, the weather this week will be pretty warm, so take a break from schoolwork and support your Wildcats at any of these events. Softball and baseball both face Grand Canyon on Wednesday. Women's tennis will be taking on Denver on Friday. Even beach volleyball will be soaking up the sun here in Tucson on Friday all day long. And lastly, Arizona baseball has a weekend series out at High Corbett against USC. That's all for sports, but don't go anywhere. The rest of Wildcast is when we return. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Toby Schmidt. And I'm Michael Hernandez. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Sarina Nafarrate. And I'm Danielle Karp. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Max Allen. And I'm Jackie Kent. Welcome to Wildcast. Welcome. Welcome. And welcome. Welcome. And welcome to another edition of Wildcast. Reporting, 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 reporting the project. Aside from a sport that made the women's team before the 9 11 students, I caught up with well, what goes on. Experts are more than students can online catfish. The project will be. Hello, and welcome back to Wildcast. Our Twitter question of the week is about music festivals. What music festivals are you most looking forward to? Coachella, Country Thunder, EDC Las Vegas, or other? Let us know on our Twitter page at UATV3. Are you going to any festivals? <laughs> uh, actually, I have just been finalizing all my plans for Coachella, so I am super excited. I just, I have where I'm going to stay. I'm just looking for a weekend to ticket, so if anybody knows of anyone selling one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make sure to reach out to her on social media, and while you're at it, follow UATV3 on all of our social media accounts. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.